Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and thanks for hanging out with me to talk about neat design things. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about figuring out the size of a coffee table. And if you're interested in that design process, please stay tuned and hang out with me. So let's get started. So in our design process to take a look at the sizes of coffee tables, we're going to take a look at dimensions, scale, and shapes. And the first part, dimensions, we want to know, you know, the width, the height, and the depth of a coffee table. So when we're taking a look at the width, I always kind of recommend having a coffee table not as wide as your sofa or even your sectional. And the reason why is that you want to make sure that there is plenty of clearance, you know, plenty of room for everyone to be able to get in and out of the seating area easily. And for both a sectional and a sofa, I always recommend starting with 18 inches less than the width of your sofa. So that would mean, you know, centering your coffee table on your sofa or your sectional and, you know, leaving nine inches on either side. And that's just a suggestion because it could be, you know, 12 inches. So, you know, it's going to be 12 inches less wide than your sofa or the seating area in your sectional. And then that way, you know, it'll be small enough so that it feels a part of the seating arrangement, but also that there's plenty of room to get in and out of the sofa or sectional. So in this example, this really cool sectional kind of with a chaise um, area, um, we noticed there's this cute little coffee table, it's super cute but it's way too small. You know, um, we really need something much larger. And so not as wide as the sectional, but just larger so that it would make more sense with the seating area. And then in this example, this is um, a nice example where I feel like everything's kind of in proportion and, you know, the coffee table's a little bit smaller than the width of the sofa, but it's, you know, large enough that it makes sense and, you know, kind of in scale with everything else in that seating area. And then even in this example, which is a cool group of nesting tables, same thing. It's, you know, it could even be a little bit wider. Maybe I would even, you know, pull out one of those tables a little bit more, but, you know, that works. It's, you know, it's still, you know, not as wide as a sofa, so people can get in and out of that sofa really easily. So the next thing that we can think about is the height of a coffee table. And, you know, coffee tables are always wonderful if they are, you know, lower than, you know, the seat cushions. And so lower or at the same height. And that way, you know, everything is easy to grab and get to. And if you shop for coffee tables, in general, they're always going to be kind of a standard height because, you know, sofas in general, chairs, there's always kind of a standard height of, you know, 17 inches, 18 inches. Um, and so lots of times, you know, coffee tables will be around those heights as well. So that's pretty easy. You don't always have to think about it. But one, you know, thing you can think about is say if you had a sofa that's super modern, but it's kind of lower to the ground. So then you'd want to, you know, find a coffee table that would work for that, that would be a little bit lower. Or maybe you found these kind of cool um, uh, ceramic basket kind of shaped uh, tables and they're in a cool grouping and you want to have at least maybe like two of those that would be, you know, low enough that um, they're easy to reach and kind of the same height as the sofa. Or maybe you even have like a neat chest, you know, same thing. You wouldn't want it too much higher 
um, than the height of your sofa seat. You want to make sure that everything is easy to grab and easy to get to. So like in this example, this chest works beautifully. It looks like it's almost like the same height as the seating part of the sofa. So that works out really well. And then the last dimension that um, we want to keep in mind is depth. So, you know, how deep that coffee table is. But really what is important to think of is the overall depth of the area that you have set aside for a coffee table. So say in a sofa, we're going to make sure that there's plenty of room for the coffee table, but also plenty of room for people to get in and out of the sofa. Plenty of clearance for people to walk in easily and to get out of the sofa and to make sure that you can also reach the coffee table easily. And what I always kind of recommend is making sure that you leave 15 inches to 18 inches in between the front of your sofa and your coffee table. Anything less, it may be too tight, you know, hard to get in and out of that area. And then anything too more, it may be kind of challenging to reach everything on the coffee table. So, you know, kind of play with those dimensions and see works what would work best for you. And that would be the same if you had a sectional. Same same thing goes, you know, making sure that there's plenty of room, you know, in between the sectional seating area and the coffee table so that everyone can get in and out of there easily, but also to make sure you can um, access anything on the coffee table easily as well. So now that we talked about the dimensions about a coffee table, we're going to talk about scale and shape in the next part. So one thing I think of when I'm thinking about scale is really it's about relationships and it's about relationships between, you know, different um, elements in a room, you know, different pieces of furniture or even the architecture of the room. Um, and it has to do with, you know, having things work well together because lots of times we'll say that's out of scale or that's out of proportion and what we're kind of talking about is something that is just not the right size and it's not you know in scale with you know something else and so we're talking about coffee tables well the same thing goes we want to make sure that our coffee table is in scale, is in proportion to, you know, our sofa. And of course, we're thinking about style and, you know, colors and, you know, materials and things like that. But in this, you know, this little exercise, we're just talking about, you know, the size of something, the overall size of something and having that, that weight and the visual weight as well as a physical weight, you know, kind of matching the sofa or sectional. So in this example, you can see there's this really neat little tiny <laughs> um, coffee table, but it's way too small. The scale of that coffee table is way too small to make sense with the sofas. And it's interesting, there's that more circular, you know, I don't know if that's wood or some other material, but that has this nice visual weight and it's probably heavy and I would totally trade it out and put that in there instead and I think that would make a lot more sense. And then in this example on the left, that coffee table totally makes sense with this very delicate little settee sofa where, you know, both are very delicate um, and their proportions, their scales work with one another. It's like mirroring, you know, what's happening. And so that makes sense to our eyes. And then same thing on the right, you know, these nice, comfy, big sofas. Well, there's nice, you know, there's this nice, chunky kind of wooden table. It makes sense, you know, you need something kind of substantial to kind of, you know, not compete, but just, you know, stay up with what's going on with the sofa. So it all kind of makes sense. So when you're looking for a coffee table, 
just kind of keep that in mind, you know, something that's going to make sense, be in scale and be in proportion to either the sectional or the sofa. So another element that I think is really important and that goes with, you know, knowing the dimensions and what size and scale of a coffee table will work for your space is also thinking about shapes. And if we think about it, we look at a sofa, a sofa is a naturally, you know, for the most part, usually naturally like a rectangular shape, you know, it's you know, longer on the two sides and shorter on the other sides. And what naturally happens, it almost kind of creates this natural uh, rectangular shape for a coffee table. And even if we had, you know, a sofa across from the other sofa or even chairs on either side, naturally there is this rectangular shape that's kind of just sitting there waiting for a coffee table to kind of fit inside that shape because we wouldn't want anything that's outside of that area because then it wouldn't make sense it would be too far away and it just wouldn't make sense with the natural shape of that whole seating area so when we're thinking about a sofa you know we're talking about a rectangle so you know naturally a rectangular shape coffee table works perfectly but then you know there are other shapes that would work well within kind of a rectangular shape that could be an oval it could be you know nesting tables whether it's you know square nesting tables or even circular nesting tables and then maybe it's even you know a set of tables in different shapes but setting those and arranging those in a way so where it makes sense and is kind of inside a rectangular area And then if you have a sectional where you have a chaise area, so a longer seating area sticking out, um, naturally you can see that there's this natural space that's a rectangular shape in that area. So same thing would go for that shape, you know, um, an oval shaped table or, you know, a rectangular table, any of the same tables that we use in a rectangular area would work really well in that area as well. And then if we had an L-shaped sectional where, you know, both sides are the same length and we look down on that on a bird's eye view, we would see naturally that there is a square shape that kind of is just waiting for a square shaped or something similar shaped coffee table that would make sense in that area. So, right, a square shape coffee table but also we could look at some other shapes that could fit within a square shape like a circle or a triangle or even like a grouping of tables so let's just take a look at all the information and bring all of that together to look at some examples of sizes of coffee tables so say if we had a five foot sofa and we subtracted, you know, 18 inches overall from the width. So we would be comfortable knowing that a 42 inch wide by 28 inch deep, 18 inches high coffee table would work really well with that sofa. And if we had a six foot sofa, the same thing, we would subtract the 18 inches from the overall width and would come up with a 54 inch wide coffee table that's 28 inches deep and 18 inches high and same thing you know um that's just you know a suggested amount but um we could go a little bit bigger if we wanted to um and that would work as well and then say if we had an l-shaped sectional that's you know 106 inches wide or long on both sides then we would be comfortable knowing that you know a 52 inch square shaped coffee table would work well in there and it could be a little bit 
smaller or even a little bit bigger, but all we did was subtract that 18 inches from the seating area in each of those sides of the sectional, and that's how we came up with that number. So those are just two examples of, you know, how to use that information in a real life situation. And so you can find a coffee table that will work well with your sectional or sofa. So I hope you enjoyed this video of the design process of figuring out sizes of coffee tables. And if you like this video, I would love it if you would press the like button and please subscribe. It helps me grow my channel. And then also you get notified when I have new videos available. And if you're interested, please stay tuned for a quick little design exercise for you to try out. So for this video's exercise, the next time you're sitting at a sofa or a sectional and there's a coffee table in front of you, have a ruler or a tape measure handy and sit down on the sofa or sectional and measure how far away that coffee table is and measure how comfortable it is for you to reach things or to get up and get in and out of the sofa just as a practice to kind of see you know you can actually feel that in real life what that feels like and you know just take a note like what feels comfortable to you what makes sense with your um, living room arrangement and just have some fun. And then if you want, you know, share your thoughts and ideas in the comments. <laughs>